Another thing that um, kind of holds people up on that is the terminology. It is important that you, you get a real good grasp on this because there's going to be questions on the exam that, that use these terms and if you're not familiar with the terminology and what they're referring to, you're probably going to have some problems. <coughs> so first of all, we've got inside and outside. These refer to where a device is physically located. Um, and by physically, I mean whether it's on your equipment or not in general. Inside means it is under your control. Generally, it's an IP that's configured on your router somewhere. Outside is not under your control because outside your network generally means it's not configured on your router. Usually, it's a, a public IP somewhere else. Uh, and then the other two sets of terms are local and global. Um, this refers to where an IP address is located from the perspective of a NAT device. So a um, you know, PC, server, etc. Local means it is seen as on the same local subnet as the NAT device. Global means it is not seen as the same local subnet as the NAT device. Um, I, I try to think of local and global as you know, public, uh, private IP or public IP. So if it's on your, your private LAN, it's going to be a local address. If it's a public IP, whether it's your own WAN IP or um, another just public IP on the internet, it's usually going to be global. <clears throat> so now the combination of these two, uh, those two sets of ter uh, terms to get four, uh, four specific address types. So inside local address, these are devices, uh, device addresses located directly on the LAN of your router. Uh, for two inside local addresses to communicate, you wouldn't even need uh, you wouldn't need any translation or even a router. You could have a switch, and two inside local addresses would be able to communicate with each other because they're on the same subnet. Uh, an inside global address this generally refers to the WAN IP of your own router. It is considered inside because the IP is on your router and under your control, but it's considered global because it is a publicly routable IP address. And then we've got our outside global and outside local. Uh, outside global addresses, these IPs characterize any publicly routable IP that is not on your router, effectively including all public IPs except the WAN IP of your own router. So basically, any public IP out on the internet that isn't your own, uh, basically the bulk of IPs are going to be outside global addresses. The last one, outside local address, this is a real kind of weird, uh, weird scenario, kind of an unusual, unlikely scenario in a lot of ways. Um, these are a relatively unusual case and can be thought of as reverse NAT IPs. They're IPs that are not on your router, but NAT is translating their normal public IP into a private address so that the local NAT device think the remote device is on their local subnet. Again, kind of a weird situation, but it's basically like, let's say you had, uh, <coughs> there was some server out there, let's say just google.com. For whatever reason, the way you were setting up your network, you wanted all of your LAN devices to think that google.com was also on that same subnet you would set up a reverse NAT entry so that it would map the public IP of google.com to a private address on your uh, on your local subnet. Again, kind of an odd situation, but that, that's the case for outside local addresses. And here's kind of a quick example of um, each of these setups. So right here you've got your NAT router, uh, you got the public internet this way. Um, your inside local addresses, those are gonna be all of your LAN devices. Um, you know, pretty much anything sitting in this bubble over here in your 192.168.0.0 range. All those are going to be inside local addresses. You've got a single public IP for your WAN interface. That's going to be your inside global address. Then anything out here on the public internet, uh, usually that's going to be an outside global address. So, you know, Cisco.com, you know, Yahoo, whatever. Everything that's a public IP that's not your WAN interface is going to be an outside global address. And then for that really unusual situation, if you want to set up a reverse NAT, uh, you could map, let's say, like this Cisco, www.cisco.com, that uh, currently has a public IP. You can map it, reverse NAT it to a, a local address so that the, the local subnet here thinks that cisco.com is on your, uh, your private and subnet, even though it really isn't. Um, configuring that with the SDM, again, I'm not really going to go into this. Uh, for the ICND-1, you may be asked to configure NAT using the SDM, but for the ICND-2 and the full like CCNA test, uh, you're going to be expected to configure NAT using the command line, so uh, we're definitely going to cover that in depth in Chapter 21, the next chapter. Um, verifying NAT configuration, um, show IP interface brief, get you familiar with 
what your interfaces are, um, you know, the up status and that kind of thing. Uh, you know, pinging 4.2.2.2, a public address, you know, from the, the private side and the, the public side. Um, and then you can also use the, the two options of show IP NAT statistics and show IP NAT translations to see, you know, what stuff is getting translated, what IPs those are mapping to and everything, and then uh, statistics showing you a little bit more granular information on those, those NAT details. Uh, troubleshooting NAT. Um, one of the things you're going to want to verify, and we'll get a lot more into this in the next chapter when we go into the command line uh, configuration, but if you do a show running dash config interface and your LAN interface, uh, it should always be IP NAT inside. And show running config interface and whatever your WAN interface is should always have IP NAT outside. Um, after that, you can, uh, you can ping a public IP from the WAN, ping a public IP from the LAN to test uh, each side. And then in, in some situations, you may get, uh, it's fairly rare, but you may have a, a translation that's stuck in your table that you need to get out of there. If you do a clear IP NAT translations in the star, it's going to clear all of your translations. Usually that's not going to be a big problem because you're going to be able to, um, you know, as, as each of those devices try to reconnect, they're going to create new entries. So clearing the IP NAT translations table is probably not going to cause a, a huge issue with your network. And that is the end of chapter 20. Questions on that one?